Hello and welcome to this MindFusion video tutorial where we will use the JavaScript scheduler library to handle some events triggered by user actions. We will create a calendar where appointments will not be allowed to take place after 8 p.m. or on Sunday. That means users cannot create new items at that time and day or modify the existing items in such a way that they occupy Sunday or evenings. We first create a folder for the project, and there we copy the mindfusion.scheduling.js file and a txt file with the license. Note that you need not have a license for the calendar to work. We have also created a subfolder called themes, where we have copied the CSS file with the theme, which we will use, peach. Our next step is to create an empty HTML file. We put it in the main folder of the project. There we add a reference to the peach theme CSS file. We need to add two more references. They will be to two JavaScript files. We will place the code just before the closing body tag. We reference the mindfusion.javascript scheduling library and a new code behind file named itemevents.js. Let's create that file and save it in the main project folder. Then we need to create a div element with an ID. Our div element shall be 600 pixels high and its width will be 100%. This div will be used to render the calendar. Let's switch now to the JavaScript code behind file. There we must create a mapping to the mindfusion.scheduling namespace. Then we create an instance of the calendar class. We use the dom get element by id method to get the div element, which we created in the HTML page. Then we create a new calendar instance and set its theme to peach. We call then the calendar.render method that can visualize the calendar. Let's view the page in the browser and see what we have created so far. Here is our calendar with the peach theme. When you click, a dialog appears that lets you create and customize events. Here is the menu that lets you specify start and end time of an appointment. Let's stop users from creating events in the evening or on Sunday. We handle the item creating event with a new method called handle item creating. All event handlers must have two arguments, a sender and an args object. Let's open MindFusion website. The page for JS Planner and check the online help. There we type item creating in the search box and find out the record for the event. Here we see that the args argument is of type item event args, and the members of this class include item and cancel. We will use the cancel property to stop the action when necessary.
Then we check the item class. It has plenty of properties, but we are interested in its start time and end time. They are of type date time, and the date time class has a field that lets us recognize the day of the week for this date. This is the day of week property that returns a number between 0 and 6. So we write the item on Sunday method that checks if the day of the week for the start or end time of the provided item is a Sunday, and if it is, we return true. Then, in the event handler, we cancel the action if the appointment ends or starts on Sunday. We create an item through the work week and it's fine. We create an item on Sunday, the item is not created. Let's create an item that starts on Sunday but spreads to the rest of the week. No effect. Let's create an item that lasts for two days through the work week. It's okay. This code works only if the item starts or ends on Sunday. Let's cover the case when the item includes Sunday but starts or ends on a day before or after Sunday. We make a clone of the item start time because we will modify it. Then we create a cycle where we add one day to the start time on each iteration. That goes on until the start time is the same as the end time. At each iteration, we also check if the start day is Sunday, and if yes, we return true. Now let's check this code. We refresh the page and try to create a new item, which includes Sunday. The item does not get created. Let's create another one through the week. It is created. Another one that covers Sunday? Again, the item is not saved. Let's add another method that also checks the hour. We said we don't want to allow events after 8 p.m. Let's add a new method that we call item too late. It gets an item as a parameter and makes an easy check. If the item starts or ends after 8 p.m., it returns true. In all other cases, returns false. We edit the item creating event handler to check for the time of the item. Let's refresh the page. We try to create a yoga class that starts at 7 p.m. and ends at 9 p.m.
No, this appointment is not created. Now we will add code that does not allow present appointments to be modified in any way that they include Sunday or the evenings after 8 p.m. We will handle the item modified event. We create a new method, handle item modified, and then we open the online help to see about its arguments. Here is a class, item modified event args. It provides data exactly for this event, and we see here that it has properties, item, and old item. Example, the item that was modified and the item before being modified. We can now edit our method this way. If an item is after 8 p.m. or on Sunday, we discard the modification and assign to the item its previous start and end time. Let's refresh the page and see if it works. We create an item and try to drag it on Sunday. No success. We modify the item to include Sunday. Again, the changes are discarded. In contrast, if we modify the item to include other workdays, the changes are accepted. Let's handle on last event, item deleting. We will not allow the user to delete any events. We write the new method, handle item deleting. And let's check which information the event args object provides. It is the same item event args class, so we can use the cancel property to stop the action. With that out application is read in terms of calendar functionality. In terms of usability, let's add an HTML div element under the calendar that will show some info to the user why their actions sometimes do not have the desired effect. We add a div element to the web page, give it an ID, and then set its left margin to 45% to make sure it is centered on the page. Then we add this method, show warning. It shows the provided text as content to the div element. Then after five seconds, it sets the content of the div to an empty string. Let's test how this feature works. We create an event and try to delete it. The warning appears. Then we try to modify the event to include Sunday. The warning shows again.
that, our event tutorial is completed. Thank you for watching and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.